Well, thank you for joining me once again on the video channel here. In the last video, I described the variable frequency vertical antenna, and that's got a tremendous response and it's encouraging to see how many people found that interesting. And of course, we're going to progress that. I've actually now prepared a sort of a semi prototype, which is a lot better than the one you saw in the original video. And it seems to work extremely well. I need to do some more work on it, but Basically, at the moment it covers 20, 17, 15 and 10 metres and you can QSY very quickly. And remember, the antenna performs as a full-size antenna on all those four bands. But the QSY is very quick and it's not overly expensive to make either. But on this video, I want to step back a bit and talk about a simple L antenna, I call it. A simple antenna. You've heard of the inverted L. Well, this is not an inverted L. It's an L antenna. A simple L antenna, which you can erect in the average small garden, and it will give you some directivity. And if you've got enough room in the garden, you can actually change the direction of the antenna. Interesting, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe this antenna because a lot of people have been interested in simple wire antennas. So here's a simple wire antenna in a very short video, but I hope quite interesting. Before I start this video, a cartoon that a fellow ham radio operator sent me. Now I'm not superstitious, but I wonder if it's coincidence that they called that fuse the 13 amp fuse. Hmm. We shall never know. Now in my previous video, I referred to an antenna, which basically was an L antenna. Now, I think we're all familiar with the inverted L antenna, which I'll just show you on the screen here. But this antenna is an L antenna. Now the video I did previously describing the variable frequency vertical antenna that's still work in progress and in the next week or so I will update you on how that's going but what I wanted to do today was to explore the actual configuration of the L antenna and show you how you might want to try it for yourself because it's very low cost and it's easy to install in a small garden and it's got some directivity and it's sort of thing you can wreck without having to buy anything. If you've got some coax cable and a bit of wire hanging about, you can experiment with this antenna. So it's a sort of experiment you can do in a day or half a day and uh, get some enjoyment out of it. And at the same time, get a little bit of um, education out of it because I think antennas are always, we're always experimenting with antennas. And I guarantee that if you experiment with antennas, you'll learn something. And getting outside there with a bit of wire and a bit of coax is great fun, but also educational. So the old antenna comprises two wires. We've got a vertical wire, quarter wave long, and we've got a horizontal wire, quarter wave long. And that horizontal wire needs to be roughly one or two meters above the ground. And at the junction of those two wires, we feed it with 50 ohm coax. It's that simple. Now, is the L antenna a vertical antenna? Or is it a bent dipole? Well, I think we're all familiar, or a lot of us are familiar, with the explanation of how a, a ground-mounted vertical works, because basically it can be regarded as a bent dipole. You've got a quarter wave vertical, and then you've got radials on the ground. Unfortunately, having radials on the ground is not the best way for many people to operate a vertical. Not everybody wants lots of radials on the ground because they've got grass, and they like to cut the grass, they like to see the lawn. And it does mean to say you've got to lay down an awful lot of wire. If you raise your vertical antenna off the ground by about a meter or uh, two meters, then you don't need nearly so many radials and you get better performance. And if we take it to the extreme, we end up with the L antenna, a vertical section and a single radial. Now you can argue, is that a radial? Or is it a bent dipole? It doesn't really matter. What's more important is how it works and how well it works. 
the attraction of a single radial is of course is that you can very easily run it out and roll it up when you're finished for the day. So you could have a vertical antenna which really takes up no room at all. Uh, you can cut the grass and the wife or whatever partner can hang the washing out and when you want to go on the air you just run the radial out. So let's take a look at a, a polar diagram, a, a W6QR bill. Um, very kindly modelled this antenna for me on 20 metres and uh, that's convenient because it's the 20 metre one I'm going to talk about. He modelled the 20 metre uh, L antenna. It was raised two metres off the ground and the actual polar diagram and uh, the elevation diagram is very interesting actually. Now if I put the polar diagram up on the screen we're looking down on the antenna and with a normal vertical you'd expect to see a complete circle but if you look at this diagram you'll see there's a dip at the top and that dip shows that there's a bit of front to back on this antenna the point of maximum radiation effectively is going 180 degrees down the bottom of the screen and the dip is at the top of the screen so we've actually got an antenna which shows a bit of directivity it's about four or five db difference which is quite exciting i think because a directive antenna in a back garden is almost unheard of, isn't it? What is not unheard of, of course, is Waters and Stanton ham radio store based here in the UK. Would you believe it? This month we celebrate 50 years in the ham radio business. Yes, it was September 1973, end of September 1973, when I opened the shop in Hockley. And we've seen an awful lot of customers and we've seen an awful lot of changes. But we never forget the customer is king. The customer is the one that kept us going for 50 years and still keeps us going. And I do appreciate you supporting the shop. It's much appreciated and so do the guys behind the counter there. So do remember that uh, when you give us a call or when you go on the website, you're looking at a company which has been around for 50 years. There's not many can say that. So. Keep in touch with Waters and Stanton and Ham Radio Shop. We've got some great deals. Part exchange. Yeah, we're quite happy to do some part exchange. Just give us a call and haggle on this and that and we'll be happy to help you out. So now let's look at the angle of radiation, which I'll put just up there. It's quite interesting, actually. Now, this angle of radiation, there's two colours. There's green and red. One was taken at 90 degrees. One was taken at 45 degrees azimuth. Basically, it's the angle of radiation, the signal leaving the antenna. And I think it's quite interesting, actually. We've got some good low angle radiation, which you'd expect from a vertical antenna, which is ideal for DX. But you've also got some decent high angle radiation. Where's that high angle radiation coming from? Well, it's actually coming from what you might regard as the radial. But you know, if you've got an antenna, a vertical antenna, with radials that are above ground, those radials clearly radiate. I mean, regard it as a bent dipole. Both elements, both elements of the dipole radiate, but of course one's horizontal and one's vertical. So in this antenna, we've got a vertical antenna emitting fairly low angle radiation, which is great for DX, but we've also got a low level horizontal radial, which is radiating. And we know that low level antennas, in other words, antennas close to the ground, they radiate high angle radiation. So we've got the best of both worlds. And if you look at this pattern, you'll see that in one direction to the left is maximum radiation and to the right is less than maximum radiation, which is the basically the bias, the front to back ratio of the antenna. Now, I think this pattern is quite encouraging for an antenna, particularly if you're going to operate portable. You've got the best of both worlds. If the band's open, you can work DX. And if the band's not open for DX, there's still some close in, in our case, in the UK, European stations to work with high angle radiation. You've got the best of both worlds. I think it's quite an interesting radiation pattern. And remember, because this radial is at a low level, only about four, uh, two meters above the ground, 
we can just grab hold of it and move it around the garden and change direction. The direction of maximum radiation is in the same direction that the radial is pointing. So it's very easy to change the direction of your antenna in a small back garden. I think that's fantastic. So how are we going to support this antenna? Well, actually a fiberglass mast is the easiest way of supporting uh, a vertical because the fiberglass mast is non-conductive. And uh, spider beams do a seven meter long mini a telescopic mast, which is ideal for this because a 20 meter vertical, quarter wave vertical is going to be five meters long. And if you want to get that radial two meters off the ground, you need five meters plus two meters, which is seven meters. So the, the fiberglass seven meter mini is an ideal telescopic mast to do this um, or to erect this antenna. Now, as regards supporting the mast, the easiest way to do it is to get yourself a bit of angle iron, um, B and Q do angle iron. And because angle iron has got a, uh, an angle, you can actually put the, uh, the spider mast against the angle. It sits nicely in that angle and then just strap it with some, I don't know, some, some means of doing it. You can use um, all sorts of ways of strapping um, the, uh, the spider mast to this bit of angle. Just bang it in the ground and that's convenient. If you want to make it permanent, then just put a bit of concrete in it and that works well. Now as regards connecting the antenna and the radials, I use another spider beam product which I'll put up on the screen now. And it's a very easy way of connecting a radial and a driven element, or radials and a driven element, to a point where you can attach a PL259 plug. So it's got an SO239 circuit on the, on the outside. That's a convenient way of doing it. And those two items, the mini spider pole and the uh, spider radial attachment, make a neat way of erecting all sorts of vertical antennas. So take a look at it. Now I'll show you the connection that I made to uh, one I was doing the experiments with. Uh, again, I've got a fiberglass pole. This is a larger fiberglass spider mast. I've got the radial attachment to it. And what you must remember to do is to attach uh, a line isolator. You'll see the line isolator in the picture. Um, you must um, actually include a line isolator just at the point where the coax connects to that junction box because otherwise you'll get some spurious responses you'll get um, common mode currents going the coax and all sorts of problems so do remember to add that line isolator you can create a line isolator by winding about seven or eight or ten turns of coax on a former which is around about two and a half three inches diameter or i find that the ferrite core is much easier um, much more simpler. And I use a 240-43 mix ferrite core and you can get those on the, on the internet quite cheaply for around about six or seven pounds. It's a good investment. 240-43 is the one that I use. Now as regards setting the antenna up, what I suggest you do is first of all calculate the length of the antenna. That's the total length, the vertical and the horizontal. Calculate that as if you're calculating the length of a dipole. And I usually calculate it in imperial, in feet and inches, because that's what I was brought up on. 468, 468 divided by the frequency will give you the actual length in feet and inches. But you need to make it a bit longer than that because there are other factors that come into play. So I suggest that you increase that length by about four or five percent and then erect the antenna with those slightly longer lengths check the vswr and then make the necessary adjustment now you really do need a vswr meter of some sort and ideally an antenna analyzer now, i use the rig expert antenna analyzers in fact i've got the aa230 zoom which is a very good frequency analyzer or antenna analyzer and I'm going to do a review on that in the next uh, week or so that covers basically 100 I think it's 100 kilohertz um, to uh, 230 megahertz not sure about the low frequency but anyway it goes up to 230 megahertz so it covers all the bands including two meters as I say I'll do a review on that in the next week or so but you can use a an SWR meter in, with the rig, you've got to be a bit intelligent, you've got to find out whether the VSWR is at the low end of the band or the high end of the band and either lengthen or reduce the length of the antenna. 
it's very much quicker if you've got an antenna analyzer, but you don't actually need one, but it's nice to have one. Now, as regards testing the antenna, I always go to reverse beacon. If you haven't used reverse beacon, it's very good, but you do need to either be able to send CW or actually key in a CW code in your transceiver. It's very good because you get instant reports from around the world. What I did um, on this antenna, and I've done it several times just to prove that it's not a coincidence, I've fired the radial or pointed the radial in a westerly direction and then pointed it in a northerly direction. And time and time again in a northerly direction, I get mainly European signals or reports from European signals. If I point it in a westerly direction, provided the band is open, I then get reports from both Europe and from the USA and Canada. In other words, North America continent. And it is definitely directive. It's not phenomenally directive, but I would say there's five or six dB in it. And it's certainly interesting to uh, point the antenna or the radial in different directions. And likewise, you could turn it a bit more um, in a sort of a southwesterly direction for uh, VK long path, etc. But it certainly is directive and it's quite fascinating. And if you're going to operate this antenna portable, of course, you probably have got room to rotate the radial in any direction you like, because you're only talking about five meters. And uh, that's, that's usually possible in a portable location. Actually, the antenna did surprise me. Um, I haven't used this configuration much before, certainly not um, uh, in, in the past. It's only over the last uh, few months I've been using it, but I have been very impressed with it. And I think it's a great configuration for portable operation. But as I said before, it's also usable for base station use. And if you're not operating, you can roll that radial up out of the way and your antenna takes very little room. Now, I grant you it's a single band antenna. But there's nothing wrong in operation a single band. You certainly get used to it. And 20 meters is a great band at the moment to operate on because it tends to be open a great deal of, well, all day and a great part of the night, if not all night. Uh, I shall come back to the original concept of this, which is a variable frequency antenna. And um, I'll just show you here in the box, I've got a prototype, which I'm working on at the moment. And that is quite a fascinating antenna. It has all the um, advantages, really, um, in terms of performance of this single band antenna, but it is variable frequency, covers four bands. So uh, look out for that video. It'll be coming up soon. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, um, please press the subscribe button so that you know when the next video is coming up. And I do enjoy doing these videos, and uh, it's, it's great fun, actually, preparing them because... Uh, uh, a lot of this is, you know, I'm building up my own experience and uh, you can join me in these, uh, <laughs> these antenna adventures. I've had one or two comments about the music, all, all the music in these videos I do. Now, some of it you may like and some of it you don't. And I, I, I must admit, some of it's a bit naff. But anyway, um, I was working on a bit of music recently and at the end of this video, you can have a listen to it. You may think it's absolute rubbish or you may like it, but judge for yourself. In the meantime, you enjoy your ham radio, take care, and as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.